Hello again, and welcome back to Obscure Offerings, the series in which I discuss little-known locomotives or multiple units, with today's subject being the British Rail Class 487. These were strange little EMUs that ran on London's shortest underground line for 53 years. The Waterloo and City Line is a 2.37 km or 1.47 mile long line running from Waterloo to Bank, passing under the River Thames in the process. The line opened in 1898, being the second deep level tube line in London after the City and South London Railway, with the WNC providing a connection from the busy Waterloo station to London's financial district. It was built by the Waterloo and City Railway Company, but owned and operated by the London and South Western Railway. For reference, Bank Station was originally named City and didn't receive its current name until 1940. Unusually for an underground railway in London, the WNC was operated as a branch of the mainline rail network for most of its life. Because it was entirely underground and isolated from the main line, the only way to get trains in and out of the system was to use the Armstrong Hoist at Waterloo. By the late 1930s, the original EMUs from 1898 were still giving reliable service, but were now looking rather outdated. As such, the Southern Railway, who inherited the LSWR in 1923, No, not that Southern Railway, you plonker. That's better. The English Southern Railway, which inherited the LSWR in 1923, were looking to modernise the WNC. Starting in 1938, new trains were built by English Electric in Preston, these would eventually be classified as the Class 487. Besides the new trains, there were plans to install escalators at Bank Station, but these were put on hold following the outbreak of World War II. Eventually, the station did get a moving walkway, which was branded as a travelator. The 487s looked similar to contemporary underground trains, such as the Standard and 1938 stock, but the coaches were noticeably shorter in order to fit on the Armstrong lift. They were only 14.98 metres long, 2.92 metres tall, and 2.64 metres wide, and interestingly the couplers had to be removed before the cars could go on the hoist, as they were ever so slightly over the maximum length with the couplers fitted. 28 of these vehicles were built, with 12 of them being double-ended motor cars and the remaining 16 being trailer cars. Unusually for a southern region line, the Waterloo City didn't use fixed formation trains, and the motor cars could either run on their own, in pairs, or at each end of three trailer cars. Typically, the Saturday and late evening services were run with just two motor cars. The trains were delivered by rail from Preston to Wimbledon Park Depot in South London, and some were tested on the East Putney Line and Brighton Main Line before entering service in October 1940. As part of the introduction of the new trains, the Waterloo and City Line itself was gradually upgraded with the original centrally placed third rail being replaced by a steel rail outside the two running rails. The motor cars could seat 40 people and were numbered from S51 to S62, while the trailer cars had 52 seats and were numbered from S71 to S86. Both motor and trailer cars had a simple 2x2 seating layout. Like the London Transport Standard stock, the motor cars had their electrical equipment located in a switch compartment above the motor bogey. They had a power output of 380 horsepower and ran off the 600 volt DC third rail system, with the top speed only being 35 miles per hour. Interestingly, they were the first southern EMUs equipped with sliding doors, in a time when the mainline units, such as the 2 HAL and 4 SUB, only had slam doors. Because the units only operated underground, their windows were much smaller than usual, and the coaches never carried yellow ends, only either unpainted aluminium or light grey. While the motor cars were only equipped with two red lamps at each end, instead of a combination of white and red lamps like you would see on things like the Class 101 DMU. The new trains hardly had time to settle down before their line was damaged by enemy bombs at Waterloo in December 1940. This forced the closure of the WNC for several months, with further enemy action damaging the Armstrong lift and parts of Bank Station in early 1941. Fortunately, none of the 487 units were initially damaged, and the line reopened in April 1941. Two years later, in March 1943, Sunday service was introduced to cater for service traffic, but this was later cancelled in 1947 and has never been reinstated. After the war, service on the WNC settled down to a fairly mundane routine. P 
peak time service was quite intensive, with trains often running every three minutes. Come 1950, the units were due for their first major overhaul, with trains being taken to Lansing Carriage Works for said overhauls, running on the main line under their own power after leaving the Armstrong lift. Interestingly, they were restricted to just 25 miles per hour while running to and from Lansing. And as the 487s were designed primarily for underground use, they weren't very weatherproof and had to be stored under cover when they were on the surface. While a set was away at Lansing, the peak time service could only be run with four trains. This reduced service was trialled in December 1949 and found to still be successful. The normal five train service didn't resume until November 27, 1950, but this meant there was a period of three weeks when no spare units were available. The last three 487 coaches returned in December 1950, these being motor cars 55 and 56 with trailer car 77. Ordinarily, these trains were painted in a simple green livery with unpainted aluminium ends, which didn't really change during their overhaul. From then on, the 487s continued to have a fairly mundane life, receiving their second overhauls between 1959 and 1963. During the second overhaul, it wasn't possible to send complete five-car trains to Lansing, owing to a more frequent service on the Waterloo and City Line. Due to ongoing issues with the bogey frames, the 487s received brand new bogies throughout the 1960s. The old Lansing works had closed by the early 1970s, and throughout this decade the units were repainted blue, but retained the unpainted ends, starting with Motor Coach 54 in March 1970. Between 1972 and 1975, individual coaches were overhauled at Selhurst Depot in South London. Curiously, 487 wasn't the unit's original TOPS classification, as they were originally called Class 453 between 1972 and 1975. So it wasn't until 1975 when they received the more familiar 487 designation. Beginning in that same year, the units were taken to Selhurst to have their asbestos fire shielding removed. Starting in 1979, another round of overhauls took place in Selhurst, though some of them would take around two years to complete. The first five coaches retained their previous livery, but some of the others had the doors, window frames, roofs and car ends updated from plain aluminium to a light grey colour. Besides the release of Asia's debut album, 1982 also saw a change to the Waterloo and City Line's timetable. Starting on January 16th of that year, Saturday services were reduced to every 15 minutes, with the first train leaving Waterloo at 7.15 in the morning. The last train would return from Bank at 1.51 in the afternoon. Starting in October 1982, peak time service was reduced from 2 to 3 minute headways, which meant one less train was required for the service. This resulted in first withdrawals for the Class 487s, with motor car 52 and trailers 81, 82 and 86 being stored in the north sidings at Waterloo before being transferred to Clapham Junction for storage. Motor car 62 and trailers 79 and 85 were damaged at Waterloo in December 1982, which resulted in trailers 81 and 86 being overhauled at Swindon and put back into service in 1984. The two coaches sent to Swindon were followed by Motor Car 51 and trailers 73 and 78. These were the first 487 vehicles to receive the red, white and blue Network Southeast livery, with the sector having been launched in September 1986. By the next year, the remaining serviceable units had all been repainted in NEC colours. Motor Car 55 never received this new livery, as she was withdrawn in October 1986 following a collision with a buffer stop at Waterloo. The coach was eventually scrapped in 1990. From this point on, the number of active 487s was gradually reduced. Trailer cars 71 and 79 were withdrawn in June 1987, eventually transferred to Wimbledon Park in 1989, and subsequently scrapped by Vic Berry of Leicester in 1990. By the end of 1987, 20 cars were still in service, enabling a quartet of 5 car trains to form the passenger service, while 2 motors and 1 trailer were kept as spare. Beginning in 1990, Waterloo Station saw a major upgrade in preparation for the upcoming Eurostar service to France via the Channel Tunnel. The new international platforms were to be built on the site of the old Armstrong lift. This was demolished in April 1990, leaving the 23 487 coaches trapped underground until a replacement crane was installed on the nearby Spur Road. By this time, the Class 487s were really starting to show their age, having been in service for just over 50 years. In 1990, British Rail announced that new trains would be introduced to replace the ancient 487s, 
with the plan being to have them running in August 1992, but for whatever reason this didn't work out, and the tired old 487s had to keep going a little while longer. Motorcar 58 was withdrawn in September 1992, leaving just one motor and one trailer left as spare coaches. Meanwhile, further modifications were made to the depot to allow the older units to be lifted out by heavy road cranes. You know, like Lofty from Bob the Builder. Trailer Car 81 was withdrawn in February 1993, with another set being taken out of service soon after. This defective set included motor cars 60 and trailer cars 83 and 84. Eventually, the end had to come for the 487s, with their last day in service being May 28, 1993. A few weeks prior, the remaining units received labels that said, On 28 May, we say goodbye to the city. New trains from the 12th of July. The very last run was operated by motor cars 57 and 59, running in top and tail formation with trailer cars 76, 74, and 77. This consist left Waterloo at 8.30pm and arrived at Bank only 4 minutes later. For the return trip they left Bank at 8.36, arriving at Waterloo at 8.40. After that the traction current was switched off and the 487s were finally withdrawn from service. Over the next 4 weeks the remaining vehicles would be lifted out of the system and taken away by road. The new trains were built by ASCA Brown Bovary in Derby, with the fleet consisting of 10 two-car units, which would be marshalled into 5 four-car units. These were designated as the Class 482, with the units being numbered from 482-501 to 482-510. Initially being delivered to Ricelip Depot in March 1993, the units would be tested on the Central Line before finally entering service on July 19, 1993. The Class 482s were largely identical to the 1992 stock on the Central Line, and are still running on the WNC today. Interestingly, this line didn't become part of the London Underground network until April 1st, 1994, when it was transferred out of British Rail's hands. Despite the ownership change, the trains remained in NSC colours for another 12 years, albeit with Underground logos in place of the NSC branding. Incidentally, one of the Class 482s was prominently featured in the film Sliding Doors, starring Gwyneth Paltrow, although for whatever reason they had the platform dressed up to look like Embankment, even though it clearly wasn't. In 2006, the Waterloo and City line was closed for five months to allow for extensive upgrades. During this time, the 482s were removed by crane and taken by road to Doncaster for refurbishment, which included a long overdue repaint in proper London Underground colours. The units are still in service today, running in four car consists and still providing an important service for commuters coming into Waterloo Station. Unusually, the Waterloo and City line is the last place on the London Underground that still uses four car trains, and it's also one of only two lines on the network to be entirely underground. The other one is the Victoria line, not affiliated with that awful dance exponents song, which runs for 21 kilometres from Brixton to Walthamstow Central, though the Northumberland Park Depot is above ground. Motive power on this line is provided by the 2009 stock, and they use an incredibly complicated form of automatic train operation that allows the line to operate at up to 36 trains per hour. As for the 1992 stock, the Central Line variant also uses ATO, but that line doesn't run to the same insane frequency as the Victoria Line, while the WNC units are still driven manually as the line is too short for ATO. Incidentally, you can drive this line in the Freeware Open BVE simulator, with that rendition of the line being set in the early 2000s. But what happened to the Class 487s? Well, sadly, all but one of the motor vehicles were scrapped, with the sole survivor not being an Asia song in this case, but rather motor car number 61. While all the other vehicles were sent to Glasgow for scrap, S61 was instead sent to the National Railway Museum in York. She was eventually moved to the London Transport Museum's Acton Depot in 2006, and has since received a full cosmetic restoration. And that brings us to the end of the story of the Class 487s. I hope you've enjoyed learning about these unique electric units, and indeed I've known about them for many years and wanted to talk about them for a fair while now. As always, image credits and information sources can be found in the description.
Feel free to check out the previous episodes in this series, which feature subjects such as the General Electric U30CG, Leon Metro MCL80, and Class 206 Tadpoles. Until next time, thank you all for watching and have a good one.